Hello! In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. Suppose A and B are finite sets such that the cardinality of A is equal to the cardinality of B. And let F be a function from A to B. Then F is one to one if and only if F maps onto B. Now, we're trying to prove a statement containing if and only if. So what we're going to do is we're going to prove if this is true, then this is true. And then we're going to prove if this is true, then this is true. So let's first prove if this is true, then this is true. And to do that, well, let's suppose f is 1 to 1. And the whole goal is to prove f maps onto b. Now to start out, we know that every function maps onto its range. So f must map onto the range of f. And what this means is, if we think of f as a function from a to the range of f, then f is a bijection between a and the range of f. The reason why it's a bijection is because, well, we know that f is 1 to 1, but we also know that f is onto its range. So we have a bijection between a and the range of f. And since a is finite, this tells us that the range of f must also be finite. In fact, a and the range of f have equal cardinalities. And then since a and b have the same cardinality, this tells us that the range of f and b have the same cardinality. Now, let's recall that the range of f is a subset of every possible codomain that f could have. So in particular, the range of f must be a subset of b. But moreover, if we also have that the range of f is not equal to b, well then the range of f is a proper subset of b. And since the range of f and b are finite, that would tell us that the cardinality of the range of f is strictly less than the cardinality of b. But that is false, because we know that the range of f and b have equal cardinalities. So, assuming that the range of f is not equal to b leads us to a statement that is false, therefore we must instead have that the range of f is equal to b. And now, since f maps onto the range of f, and the range of f is equal to b, this tells us that f maps onto b. Which is exactly what we wanted to show. So this proves if f is 1 to 1, then f maps onto b. Now let's prove if f maps onto b, then f is 1 to 1. To do so, let's suppose that f maps onto b. And the whole goal from here is to prove that f is 1 to 1. Now, since f maps onto b, what this means is, for every element b in b, there exists an element a in a such that f of a is equal to b. Right. So this is what it means for f to map onto b. Now instead, I'm going to label a by g of b. So what I'm essentially saying here is, we can take each element in b and map it to an element in a, which has this property. So this yields a function from b to a, which we're going to call g. And it turns out g has the property that the composition f compose g is equal to the identity map on b. And to see why this is true, well, we know that f compose g is a function from b to b. Also, the identity map on b is a function from b to b. So to show that these two functions are equal, it would suffice to show for every element b in b, f compose g evaluated at b is equal to 
the identity of B evaluated at B. Right? And it's pretty easy to show that this is true. Because if we give ourselves an arbitrary element, B in B, and then by definition of G, we know that every element of B gets mapped to an element of A, which has this property. So if we take B to be the B we have here, then G of B is an element of A that has this property. So this is true. We know from the definition of a composition that F of G of B is equal to F compose G evaluated at B. Right. And then from the definition of the identity map, B is equal to the identity of B evaluated at B. And so this shows that this is true. And so we have shown given an arbitrary element of B and B, this is true. So for all B and B, this is true. And that shows that F composed G is equal to the identity map on B. So this is in fact true. But what can we do with this? Well, we know that G is a function from B to A, F is a function from A to B, and F composed G is equal to the identity map on B. Turns out no matter what A, B, F, and G are, if these three things are true, then these three facts imply that G is one-to-one. -one. Right? And I'll leave a video in the description which proves this property. Now notice, G is a function from a finite set to a finite set. And these finite sets have equal cardinality. So we can apply the same argument that we did up here to show that F maps onto A, right? It's the same thing that we did in the forward implication. Now we're ready to show that F is one-to-one. -one. To prove that F is one-to-one, -one, let's give ourselves two elements, A1 and A2 in A, such that F of A1 equals F of A2. The whole goal is to prove A1 is equal to A2. Now, since G maps onto A, we know this means that for every element A and A, there exists an element B and B such that G of B is equal to A. So in particular, since A1 is an element of A, there exists an element B1 and B such that G of B1 is equal to A1. Similarly, since A2 is an element of A, there exists an element B2 and B such that g of b2 is equal to a2. Now, if we can show that b1 is equal to b2, then it follows that a1 is equal to a2. So, to see that b1 is equal to b2, well, check this out. From the definition of g, we know every element of b gets mapped to an element of A, which has this property. So if we take B to be B1, then G of B1 is an element of A, such that F of G of B1 is equal to B1. But then we know that G of B1 is equal to A1. And then by assumption, F of A1 is equal to F of A2. And then we know that A2 is equal to G of B2. And then applying the definition of G again, we'll take B to be B2, and we have that G of B2 is an element of A, which has the property that F of G of B2 is equal to B2. And this shows that B1 is equal to B2. From here, it immediately follows that A1 is equal to A2, because we know that A1 is equal to G of B1, and then since B1 is equal to B2, we can replace B1 with B2, and then we know that G of B2 is equal to A2. And this shows that A1 is equal to A2. So putting this together, this tells us, given any two elements, A1 and A2 in A, if F of A1 equals F of A2, then A1 is equal to A2. And that's precisely what it means for F to be one-to-one. -one. And so we have proven 
If f maps on to b, then f is 1 to 1. And at this point, we have proven both directions of the if and only if. So this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.